Hi guys and welcome to the Killerbits. I'm Toby and uh, I'm continuing my Dark Souls playthrough. Well, Dark Souls 2 playthrough, I suppose. First things first, we're at the village of Majula, which is sort of like the filing shrine of this game. And uh, we haven't yet talked to the Emerald Herald, who's this lady. She wants to know whether or not we're the next monarch. <laughs> I think you'll find, baby, that I am definitely the king. Which is why I'm rewarded with Nessus Flask, I suppose. Excellent. Uh, I'd also like to point out that I am in no way the king. <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. So, we've got an Estus Flask. Uh, this is the blacksmith. But his <laughs> his shop is locked for the moment. So, uh, first things first, we should probably go and get the key for that. Well, I suppose first things first, we should probably do a little bit of uh, housekeeping in Majula. Life gem, lovely. A little healing item. <laughs> One thing that I do like about this game is the improved physics. I mean, you can no longer kick around dead bodies, but you can uh, <laughs> fuck with barrels and crates. Which is cool, because later on there's actually some environmental puzzles. There's also uh, this little, uh, little secret, which you might not have seen yet. <laughs> which gives us an Estus Flask Shard, which is very, very useful. Because the way that Estus works in this game isn't like in Dark Souls 1 at all. In fact, as you can see, I've only got one flask, which, you know, that's that's sort of useful. I might uh, hear you say, well, one thing's better than none. Uh, but, <laughs> well, it's not actually very much better than none. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Emerald Herald, and we're going to give her that shard in order to increase the number of Estuses we can use. Okay. So she's telling us that there are four people that we need to kill before we can go and see King Vendrick. But you actually only need to kill two of them. It's it's weird. It's a whole thing. <laughs> it's even more of that good old Metrovania stuff that uh, Dark Souls is known for. Okay, so let's level up. Oh, we can't level up yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, well, in that case, I suppose it's on to our first area. <sighs> now, my... Uh, my collector's edition came today, which means that I've actually got a whole bunch of equipment that I could be using, but for the purposes of this playthrough, we're not going to use any of the DLC stuff. It just seems sort of uh, unfair on uh, viewers who don't have the DLC stuff. I mean, I don't want to give you guys a misrepresentative experience here. <laughs> okay. Come on. Uh, Dark Souls 2 is also a lot more sprawling than Dark Souls 1. Uh, Lordran itself was actually very, very small, but Drang Lake seems to sort of branch off in loads and loads of different directions at once. It's really weird, and I mean, not all roads lead back to Majula, as they did with Filing Shrine. Lovely new human effigy. Ah, too pro. <laughs> and while a lot of people may think that that's sort of a bad decision in terms of uh, design. I actually find it... it's a little bit more like the Archstones were back in uh, Demon Souls. There is a central hub, but at the same time all of the levels are sort of off on their own, and it serves to give the game a far more... I suppose realistic world feel. Everything feels a little bit more fragmented, which only serves to make you feel less safe, which is <laughs> always a good thing. Right, here's our first bonfire of the game, which isn't that... Oh, Just remember that I've got no shield. Also, none of my filthy tricks work anymore. I mean, you can warp the second that uh, you start the game, but backstabs are hard to pull off, parries are hard to pull off. All in all, the game itself just... It, it's been tweaked a little bit. Not as much as I thought in the beta. I mean, iframes are still around, and in the beta, they were really, really not. So, I don't know, it just seems to have made it a little bit more like Dark Souls 1, which I'm sort of relieved about. I mean, I know that might be an unpopular thing to say, but Dark Souls 1's just perfect, all right? They didn't need to deviate too far. Ow. <laughs> not having a shield is really uh, causing me issues here. Take a wee sippy, as per usual. First wee sippy of the entire series. Okay, I'm going to 
jumping attack onto this guy. Ow, we completely missed. <laughs> it's not so bad. I really, really like this river as well. It's something that we didn't really see in the first game. In fact, the whole game just looks astonishing. There's also been a lot of arguments this week as to whether or not the uh, beta provided a an unrealistic version of the game in terms of uh, lighting engines and stuff, but I don't know, I still think it looks pretty good. I mean, I can understand why people would be upset if the game did deviate too much, but having been in the betas? I don't know. I suppose I'm getting a little bit off topic here. We should probably be heading on. Hmm. Okay, so up this ladder we'll see our first Hyde Knight. Now, the Hyde Knights are a bit like the Black Knights, except they belong to an ancient order. They look like Templars from uh, Assassin's Creed, which is kind of cool. And they're also really, really hardcore. <laughs> Which is why I don't think that we'll be fucking with this one just yet. Actually, I don't know. Maybe we will. See how I feel once I've murdered all these guys. Oh, stamina management's also really, really important. Especially at this low level. I have to go deal with that sniper. Ow. Yep, let's go deal with it now. Another notable change is, well, as well as being able to warp, which gives you free access to Majula at any time, you can only now level up with the Emerald Herald, who's the woman that gave me the Estus Flask. Which, uh, it sort of harkens back to the Maiden in Black from Demon Souls, which is another reason I think this game feels more like Demon Souls than Dark Souls. Which isn't really a bad thing. I really, really like Demon Souls. Okay. <laughs> So now I've got a short sword. I mean, we've already got a broadsword, but... What? Let's go and deal with the Hyde Knight. Besides, it's just about time that I died, really. Might be uh, more entertaining for you guys to see me go disgusting and hollowed. Hollowing no longer makes you look like beef jerky, though. It makes you actually look a bit like a zombie, which, as far as I'm concerned, is really, really cool. Okay, so there's the Hyde Knight. Now, we can't talk to him and we can target him, which should be your first sort of indication that he's a badass. Well, I suppose your first indication should be that nobody is messing with him and he's in a, uh, a clearing surrounded by dead bodies. Come on, I know you're an enemy. Okay, so let's lock on. Pop a life gem since we've got so many of them. No shield. This could be tough. Oh, well, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> little backstab. We really, really want to blitz him. You know, we don't want him to be uh, getting up anytime soon. Especially because his sword has thunder damage on it. Which is a really useful thing to have in the early game. I mean, there's a fire sword that we can get in a second, but... I don't know. Thunder's way cooler than fire. Besides, we'll have pyromancy later on. Which means... Oh! No, 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 no. <laughs> There we go. One dead Hyde Knight. Hyde Knight's sword times one. Perfect. Let's uh, try and equip it. <laughs> yeah, I did not think we had the strength. Oh well, never mind. Through the fog we go. Now, this area is just filled with hollows. Which I suppose makes sense. But they've all got these weird conque <laughs> can never say that word conquistador helmet thing going on. Which is an aesthetic style that we never really saw in Dark Souls 1. So I mean, you know, we keep on getting new things added and it's really nice. Oh, and they're just at this stage, because we've got no shield, they're really intimidating. Ah, life gem. Souls swooping around. Now, I don't know whether or not to go up to the the, uh, the first boss in this episode. I mean, if we've got time, we definitely will. But we might just end up uh, heading over to per Peter Serafinowitz's place. God, I love that guy. I love that he loves Dark Souls as well. That was a genuine surprise for me. I mean, not that much of a surprise, because I know that Serafinowitz likes cool stuff. I don't know, there aren't many celebrities of whom I'm a fan, and knowing that he likes <laughs> Dark Souls is just making me want to see every movie he's ever been in. Except for episode one, obviously. 
So weird is the voice of Darth Maul. He's got nothing else to do with it except that he's just the voice of Darth Maul. Okay. So these hollows haven't really given us anything in the way of challenge. We've just sort of cut our way through them. I mean, we're out of Estus, but we've still got 17 life gems. <sighs> all in all, the fusion of what made Demon Souls good and what made Dark Souls good has really, really paid off in this game. At least I think it has. I mean, so what if the servers aren't up yet because we're still playing the game early? <laughs> so what? The second the PvP comes up, there's going to be a lot of PvP videos. I'll tell you that for free. In fact, I'm doing all of this for free now that I think about it. Oy vey. Bonfire lit. Now we can take a, a sit here. If we get straight back up, because we've got we've got enough souls that we can... Just thinking. Right, our first stop is going to be to commute back to Majula. Because we really, really do need to level up. Wonderful. Here we are. Okay, bear of the curse, blah blah blah. Yes, I'm going to seek larger and more powerful souls, that's not an issue. <sighs> okay. So we're just going to pump everything into strength for now. Just because <laughs> we've got enough vigor, which used to be, uh... I can't remember what it used to be called, actually, as I think about it. Oh, that's, that's piss poor fanboying, Toby. Okay, let's walk back to the bonfire we were just at. But no, we need as much strength as possible. We're going to go for a strength build this time because, you know, they're usually the most uh, straightforward to go for. Which is always, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a very straightforward kind of person. I have no filter between my mouth and my brain, which <sighs> can be more irritating than uh, <laughs> than good, I assure you. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the HUD just briefly while we're heading down here. If you look up in the top left, you can see that there's a blank icon, and that's because now, in that place, is a mark of the Covenant that you're in, which means that Covenants actually have an aesthetic sort of effect on the game, which is really, really nice. It makes you feel like you're a part of something, and is a sort of constant reminder that you've chosen, well, of a path that you've chosen. Okay, fog wall here. Thankfully enough, there is no boss on the other side of this fog wall. <laughs> Just this weird, uh, just this weird area. In fact, I'm going to explore this weird area because I like it very, very much. Okay, if we hop down here, lovely. <laughs> oh god, I still have zero shield. I mean, I, I do have shields in my inventory, but as I said, I'm not going to be using DLC equipment here. Actually, I don't know. I mean, now that I've uh, I've sort of got a capture card. I can record these on a week by week basis rather than having to do, you know, however many of them at a time. So this might actually end up being a more audience interactive based LP, especially since we only ever release once a week, whereas most LPs release, you know, what, twice a day? When I say most LPs, I mean sort of, you know, all the big ones, all the good ones, the Game Grumps and the, the PewDiePies. I've got, <laughs> well, this weekend alone I'm putting in 36 hours at Rick's Bar. So, you know, you can imagine how tired I'm going to be. In fact, I've, I've left this relatively late, late in the week. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, okay, that, that was good. I completely forgot that there was a big rolly rock. Ah, Indiana Jones, eat your heart out. So that's the first death of the run. Uh, once again, I should point out that I'm playing the game entirely mute. Uh, I could plug in some headphones, I suppose, but... It's just so much effort, and the headphones always end up bleeding into the mic audio, and I want to make this into a, you know, an actual quite high-quality experience for you guys. Which is ironic, because I'm shit. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at... Ooh, hello. <laughs> so, hollowing in this game is truly fucking disgusting. Uh, as you get progressively more and more hollow, you lose more and more of your health bar. And you actually begin to look more and more disgusting. You know, your hair starts falling out, or your teeth start you know, coming out. It's it's a very sobering experience to see a character who you've spent ages making slowly get reduced to uh, 
<laughs> to a mindless zombie. I mean, I didn't spend ages making this character, but my main character, I've put quite a lot of time in trying to make him look like myself. I failed, obviously, because there is no hideously ugly slider. I mean, I suppose hollowing is a hideously ugly slider, but I'll shut up now. Nothing like self-pity. Okay. Headshots stagger you extra. Okay, little backstab here. Get away. Oh, God. They do stagger you so much. Especially if you're not wearing a helmet. I mean, that mechanic existed in Dark Souls 1, but it seems like they've really overemphasized it in Dark Souls 2. Okay, I think the Rolly Rock is a one-off. Hey, it's a Manic Miner. <laughs> okay, we've put him down. We'll pick up oh, another human effigy. That's really useful. In fact, I'm, I'm so tempted to use it. Especially before we see Peter Serafinowitz. I, <laughs> I want to look my best for when I meet him. Okay, if we keep talking to this guy, he will open up the mansion in Majula. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Key to the mansion. Beautiful. And now we can... I was going to say jump out here, but I was clearly wrong. <laughs> I don't exactly know this game quite as well as I know Dark Souls. Which is weird, because it is Dark Souls, so it, it all feels really familiar. But at the same time, the fact that it you know it's in a new place, and some of the mechanics are slightly tweaked, and there's different stats... It's like a whole new game. Okay, let's take out this motherfucking archer. <laughs> High frames, baby. Okay. We are rapidly running out of time. I need to stop uh, pussyfooting around and just, uh, just get to murdering. Okay, so we've sliced him up. And again... Another conquistador dead. I do like their padded armor, but this falconer set looks really, really awesome. Plus, I like red, you know. Tommy, con <laughs> Tommy, or was it Jason? Confirmed for the best Power Ranger. Jason. Jason. Okay. Let's kill this guy. Now we do not want to go up there. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, fuck it. Maybe I should. Yeah, I'm going to do it, and then I'm just going to run away. Uh, one of the things that they've introduced in this game is that sometimes things will happen which can edit the course of the game. That is the Pursuer boss, who is the second boss in the game. And you can fight him early. He gets dropped off by a fucking eagle. <laughs> and I have no way to defeat him at this early stage. I'm nowhere near a high enough level. And this is a one-shot encounter. I mean, in New Game Plus, I'll definitely be able to deal with him. But... As it stands, he's sort of like a weird, floaty Artorius knight. Oh, and that blue thing right there, that can curse you. So I'm going to... I think I'm just going to leave him be. Whoop. There we go. Right. Hopefully he'll accept my cowardice and just... <laughs> just stop. Anyway, we're about to see Pate for the first time. Mild-mannered Pate. There he is. And this is the character voiced by... A man whose name I've said numerous times in this video, Peter oh, Serafinowitz. Traveling all alone. Well, I hope you. Oh, hogwash. My name is Pate. Just want to say hither and thither. I journey hither and thither. There it is. <laughs> treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful. Okay, so he tells us all about bandits and all the rest of it. But basically, this is a one-way gate, and the reason that we're going to do this is because I really want the white sign stunning stone. Because the servers go up tomorrow, which means it'll be time for some glorious collaboration. Or is it jolly cooperation? Who knows? It's the second game, I think, that we can get away with a new a new Mimi. Okay, slice him up. Oh brilliant, I've got the conquistador helmet. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. This is now a hundred percent worth it. Who's brilliant? That allows me to magic, <laughs> magic up my weapon. Okay, through we go. 
thing that I like about life gems is that you can just use them while you're moving, which means that you know, they're, they're very good if you play quite turtley because you can retreat and heal at the same time. Plus the healing effect actually lasts for ages. As you can see it's only just one off. Kill these hollow soldiers. Beautiful. When we get 4,000 souls as well, I'll head off and get a uh, Pharisee's Lockstone. Which is a really, really useful item, which uh, I'll explain about in another part, I think, because unless you can see one of the many keyholes of Pharis, it's very, very difficult to explain what they actually do. Okay, go around here. Man, archers are a real bitch when you don't have a shield. They can be a little bitch even if you do have a shield, but... I think they're worse if you've got nothing to block their arrows. Come on. Roll through. Lovely. Come on. Ah, brilliant. Not quite a backstab. The backstab uh, angle also seems to be far more demanding in this one. You have to actually be standing directly behind them. Ah, fantastic. We're already through the little, that little gantlet. And there's Pate again. Brilliant. Well, time to get the white, <laughs> white thingamy summon stone or whatever it's called. There we go. White sign soapstone. <laughs> white thingamy so summon stone. I'm, I'm an idiot. <sighs> but I'm an idiot that's made a video. If you like this video, why not click the like and or subscribe buttons? I'm going to have to be dealing with that big fucker over there <laughs> next episode, so that's going to be fun. Uh, why not let me know which way I should go in the uh, comments? Uh, always nice to hear from you guys. We also have a Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the kilobits and a Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the kilobits. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.